Start by cheers. Sure. <laughs> well, hello there. Nice to see you. <laughs> so, it's nearing the end of our trip, and I guess um, as we're getting close to the end, I just wanted to reflect on the stuff that we've been doing so far, um, especially what I've been doing in the clinic. What I've been doing is I've been volunteering at a clinic in the local town of Gede. They're really short-staffed when it comes to healthcare workers, so just having me there as an extra body is really helpful. <laughs> so, basically this health center is a public health center, so it's free to the public here. They have family planning services, they have maternity services, child welfare services. The doctors are there to see them for any illnesses that they have, and a pharmacy is there. They aren't stocked with a lot of medications, usually just a few different antibiotics that they can give to people. And if they're worse, they can refer them to a bigger facility in the bigger city that's nearby. What my day looks like is I wake up around 7, 7.30, get ready real quick, and then we bike into Gede, which takes about a half hour to cycle into Gede. And then from in the morning, usually I will help with the child welfare services for the first uh, four hours. And then we have lunch and we always have the, what's it called? Yazi or we go out for lunch. Yazi is like a fried potato and they have this spicy um, kwaiju, I think it's called. It's a spicy sauce that has mangoes in it and it tastes amazing. It's like having french fries with spicy sauce or whatever, but it's very good. And then after that, I usually go help in the maternity ward or if um, we have a self-defense class, we go to do that. And so it's been fun. I'm excited that it's coming to an end because I'm excited to go home to my normal job. But this has been uh, really fun and I'm very thankful for the experience and I'm thankful that I've been able to help the clinic as well. So it's pretty cool that they, they do give free services and right now their big push is about family planning and educating the local community on how they can increase the amount of family planning used because, um, because of the cultural stuff here, a lot of the men and women don't like using family planning. They're worried that family planning will um, encourage younger girls to have um, babies younger because they'll be, well, encourage promiscuity in the younger population if there's family planning. Um, and also it's the family planning services changes the uh, natural cycle of a woman with the hormones and stuff being used so it kind of scares them and they don't want to use them anymore. But we're really trying to educate them on how using these as um, really good because it helps them to produce strong healthy families with the amount of kids that they want so it's really special for them because usually when they don't have family planning services they'll have 8 to 12 children and they don't have enough money for them to pay for the school fees or pay for the food and so they end up being a very poor family and the older a mother gets and continues to have children, 
um, the weaker the children get, especially when the mom will have an 18-month-old child and be still be breastfeeding, but then be pregnant with her next child. And that uh, produces um, weak children because the mom is weak from taking care of these kids. And so family planning is really important and they're really trying to educate them on that. Another thing that um, the health center is really trying to uh, learn and get better at is how to better serve the young people and youth in their community. So the problem with healthcare services that are free in this area is that they're only open during working hours, which is between eight and five o'clock. So eight in the morning to 5 p.m. And this is difficult because this is the time when young people and when kids are in school. So they're having a difficulty with teaching family planning services and stuff and, and sexual education to these and sexual education to these young people because they're in school. Another barrier for them to communicate with them is that the culture is so religious that they're very, very, very shy about talking about reproductive health, especially with younger people. When you mention um, reproductive health in any way, they actually start to giggle like the adults do. So when I first got here, they were going through training of how to um, provide reproductive health teaching to younger people and when they were going over the ways of contraception and stuff like that they would giggle every single time they would say a <laughs> every single time they would say a reproductive organ they would giggle or laugh and so it's difficult for these um, health professionals to speak with young people about stuff when they feel uncomfortable about talking about it so I suggested that instead of waiting for the um, young adults and youth to come to them to speak about reproductive health, I suggest suggested that they do outreach services to the schools when available and speak to each individual um, child alone and that way the kid will not feel uncomfortable or ashamed about talking to them because everybody will be talking to a health professional and I think that'd be a really good idea. The only problem is that it's difficult for them to get funds to have the transportation and stuff into the schools. So hopefully they put some reproductive health for young people at the top of their list of things that they that want to be done and it seems like they're trying to do that. The, the government is really trying to push for that especially in Khalifi County, which is the area we're in, because there's so much. Um, the rate of young girls having teenage pregnancies and then dropping out of school is one of the highest here. So they really want to reduce that and having reproductive health teaching in this area will really improve that. Another service that they provide at the health clinic is child welfare services. So what this includes is weighing the baby seeing how tall they are and then giving them their vitamins that are needed and if they're underweight they send them to the nutritionist which is also a free service at the health clinic. So the nutritionist will take a look at them, see how underweight they are, give them some supplements so that they can grow healthier. Um, so what I do in this is I am able to help a lot because it doesn't require a lot of communication. So it makes it easier with the language barrier that I have with the community that I help with that job, especially because there's such um, there's such a lack of staff there that me helping with that is really important. So I'll sit there and weigh the babies and see what vitamins they need, and then if they need a vaccination, I send them over to the other table where the nurse will give vaccinations, and all the vaccinations are free as well. And it's cool that I've been here for um, three months now, so I start to see the same babies coming and going, and so I, I have been seeing them growing up in the three months that I've been here, which is kind of cool too. Um, and then in the same area, they do the family planning services. And the family planning services are all free as well. So 
they do the injections, the hormone injections, they do the implants, which is pretty cool. The, the nurses do the implants where they, they put the implant into their arm and it can stay there for three to five years, depending on which one they give. And it's a really good way for them to prevent them having babies. And it's a, you don't have to keep on thinking about it. You don't have to come in every month for an injection, but it's cool that it's for free. They also do the um, IUDs there. And so what I've been doing there is assisting them with the uh, procedures and I have put in a few implants and taken them out too. So it's pretty fun, but um, it's, it's interesting that with the lack of the lack of equipment that they have, they're still able to do their job. So it's very cool. It's, it's interesting seeing how the nurses are able to come up with ways to do their job efficiently and safe as well. Another service that they have at the health clinic is they have the maternity ward. And the maternity ward is open 24 hours, so the women can come and give birth whenever they want, and or whenever they have to, <laughs> not when they want. And then, so I've been helping and assisting in that area because sometimes they'll have two moms who are giving birth at the same time and only one nurse. So I've been assisting with um, births and assisting with preparing the baby after the birth. And it's been pretty cool. I, that was my first time seeing a birth in real life. And it was kind of, well, for one, it's gross. It's beautiful. And it's gross. Yeah. Another thing that they do at the health clinic is they have support groups for patients with HIV and AIDS and this is when the support group comes all together and they get uh, tested for the stage that they're in, they get their medications for their cocktails for the HIV and AIDS and they also get some vitamins and supplements that help them to be healthy and to pre prevent from getting sick. And they also treat their symptoms. And so I've been able to assist and be uh, a help with that as well. And it's, it's interesting because the support groups, you can see that these people, there's such a stigma when it comes to HIV and AIDS, but these people don't seem to fall into that stigma. They still are very lively. They are a part of the community. You can't really tell that they're any different and they, they don't act any different, which is really cool. Every month, twice a month, they do a outreach where they take their services to a community that can't access a health center. So I was able to go with them once and it was pretty cool. They were giving out the family planning services there, the vitamins to the kids and the vaccines. And it was nice seeing the, cause we're in a tourist area here. So a lot of the people that are around this area have more things than, they're a little bit more well off than the people who are in the villages further away. So seeing those people was a bit different. They were. Uh, really excited that they were bringing these services to them and it was nice that they're able to provide that service. Um, about a month ago I was able to go on a day trip with a group of Brazilian doctors or student doctors from Brazil who were going to the public hospital in Malindi and they were helping and learning as well and I was able to go with them and it was kind of cool because I was able to see a uh, respiratory doctor there and it was exciting for us to see each other because I uh, work on a respiratory unit at home so we were able to talk about stuff like that and she was you know so upset that when she was there there were things that she could do to help the people at the hospital because she knew how to fix them but because they had a lack of equipment and a lack of medicine they were not able to help people so she said that she had to watch a 23 year old who was having um, respiratory distress die right in front of her even though she knew how she could fix her but there wasn't any equipment there to fix it and 
for her that was really sad and I could imagine how that would be awful. And as we were going through this hospital, it was strange to see how um, the culture, I don't want to say anything that will offend anyone or, or hurt anybody, but I think because of the way that things are here, because there's nothing you can do about stuff. Like when you're driving down the road, you see an accident on the road and there's no one who's able to help. They can't get an ambulance there quick enough to get somebody to the hospital quick. So it's almost like the culture has adapted and have a different, um, what's the word? You can cut this out, I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like the culture has adapted and has a different perspective on life. It's almost like the worth of human life is um, very different than what we have at home. You know, they see suicide differently here. If someone tries to commit suicide, they're like, okay, not much we can do. Whereas at home, if somebody tries to kill themselves, we do everything that we can to fix them and then get the help that they need after because that's really important. Um, so, you know, it, it's interesting to see how it's different here. It's, it's very sad, but interesting. Uh, when I was at the hospital in Melindi, uh, there was a man there, and he was dying of a respiratory illness, chronic respiratory illness, so he wasn't dying right away, but he had seen the doctors there and saw me with them, and he had asked, you know, are you guys going to save my life? And I was like, like I, don't, I didn't really know what to say because, you know, there's not much we could do. We're just there doing what we could, but I was able to say to him, you know, we unfortunately don't have the services to give you a new pair of lungs, so we're not going to be able to save you from your respiratory illness. But I was able to sit with him and provide him some comfort, and I asked if he was a Christian and he said he was and so I, I prayed with him and you know we we shared a moment and I, I felt it was sad but um, I guess they have to accept here that they can't get some of the services that they need. The sad part is that if you go to a private hospital they have all the stuff that can fix this stuff but public hospitals don't. I was blessed to be able to be a part of the Jiggers campaign that um, uh, Debasso Tugangani is an organization in the Hotamu area, I guess in the Debasso area, which is around this area. <laughs> um, but they are a group of people who are researching how to help uh, reduce the amount of jiggers in the community. Um, jiggers are, are a, it's a type of flea, it's a sand flea that gets into the feet of people here and the things that cause them to get them is if they're not wearing shoes or if they're always in the sand, if they don't have proper flooring and stuff in their homes. So. A, a few years ago, there was a huge epidemic of it. All of the kids had, you know, like up to 12 jiggers living in their feet, which made it painful for them to walk. And it was uh, difficult to get rid of. And they used to use a chemical um, a mixture that would get the jiggers to come out. but a person that we have met, Lynn, who is now a really good friend of ours, um, made a group of, or an organization that helped to create a natural uh, form of medication that would help uh, get the jiggers out and prevent them from getting them. So what they did is they took the neem tree. So a neem tree is a thing that grows naturally here and the seeds from the neem tree is um, medicine. So once they're taken out and, um, do they dry them? Or do they put, make them into a... Yeah, I think they squish them to get mm -hmm. the oil or water. Yeah, so they take the oil from the seed. And what it does is it acts as a, um, I guess it, it acts as an insect repellent. 
And so they, they mix the neem with coconut oil and this acts as a good healing solution. And so it gets the jiggers out and they make a spray and spray the area and it keeps the jiggers away. Mm -hmm. And they have almost a hundred, almost a hundred percent decline in the amount of jiggers that kids have been getting. It's basically just now reoccurring um, problems that kids have that they go continue to go into the community and uh, get rid of. So the big thing about them is they're doing education. You know, you have to have good hygiene, wash your kids' feet, use this neem soap, and they make the soap and sell it. So it's a way for them to be sustainable as well as they make a cheaper version of the soap and give it to the community so that they can reduce the amount of um, jiggers. Um, but I don't know, it's pretty cool and I was able to go help them one day. They were, uh, I'm thankful that they let me, um, they welcomed me into it to help. Okay, how's Mickey doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's doing well. She's great. She's a good girl. She's friendly. She's hardworking. Yeah, she's bright. Jiggers? I'm not there yet. What is it called, Yazi? Stop it! Oh, uh.